Hi, I'm Mylene Roach and welcome to today's episode of Between Friends. We are talking all about hooping, hooping 101, of course, with Snap Hoop Monster. But I love hearing from our friends who are signing in in the chat. Marjorie Hirschberger up in Lank, well, out east in Lancaster, PA. She said she's so excited after watching Between Friends last week and listening to Ashley that she stitched out six patches for her grandsons. Oh, I love that. I love to hear that what you're learning here at Between Friends, you're actually using in, you know, your own sewing room. So that's wonderful. Absolutely. Uh, and Kathy Salt, you get, you know, wonderful thoughts and prayers to our friends in Lahaina for sure over in Maui that still struggling and will be for quite a long time. Um, let's see. Oh, Mary S. Larson. She said she's excited to have her snap hoops for her Janome M17. That's her Continental 17. I am happy for you too. Beautiful machine. Just a gorgeous machine. And Stephanie from Caesar, she says she always needs hooping tips. Who doesn't, right? We're all still learning for sure. And, you know, this new product that I'm going to show you today was invented because of that Janome M17. And we'll get into that in a little while. But um, first, I thought we would talk about, well, let's see. Um, First, we're going to start with the basics of hooping, right? And we're going to hoop to a towel, a couple quilts, a hoodie, and a t-shirt. These are the things that many of us are embroidering on all the time. So, uh, but one of the struggles that we often hear about a uh, snap hoop monster is just getting the top frame aligned with the bottom frame. And, you know, how do we do that, right? So it is a, a metal bottom and a magnetic top. So they do want to snap together. That's why they're called Snap Hoop Monster. But sometimes they're not perfectly aligned. And if they're really off, uh, you know, separate from each other, then you most certainly could stitch on that top frame. But, you know, I've actually really have not seen that happen because in order for them to hold together, they do need to be aligned in some fashion. So let's see. Um, so traditionally, there is two ways to align on um, um, align these two frames. And one I'm going to show you first. I'm going to play a little vid video for you because... I know many of us quilt with these hoops. And so that's a little different because we're really aligning right under the needle. So let's take a look. Oh, and Mary Larson, you're going to love this because that M17 is in the video. Ready for the next hooping? You don't have to remove the whole quilt. Just lift that top frame and stash it out of the way. I attach it to the metal leg of my table and then advance the fabric to the next design area. Place that top frame back in position, slide it under the embroidery foot, and then take a moment to align the top frame with the metal bottom frame. And then you are ready to stitch your next quilting design. And so when you do it under the needle, you are manually aligning uh, the top from the bottom. And that's a good thing because, you know, the beauty of a snap hoop monster is that we're not taking the entire quilt and hoop off of the machine for every hooping, right? We leave that bottom frame in place. And if you're like me, all of my sewing tables have metal legs so that I can just store that snap hoop monster uh, on the leg while I'm advancing the fabric. So, like I was saying, we remove that top frame, advance the fabric, and then slide it back into position. So, but if you are uh, hooping, like many of us do, another item that's not quilting, Ready? Then we're going to go to the overhead camera, and I'm going to show you how we do that, you know, normally, right? So, 
I hear I have my snap hoop monster. And I noticed that somebody in the comments said the first time they used their hoop, she stitched through the plastic, that she actually kept the plastic in place um, while she hooped. And, you know, Mary Larson, many, many years ago, I took a class from Martha Pullen, and she shared a fun story how she was teaching shape lacing, and they used pizza boxes clean ones, of course, to shape their lace, right? And you do that by uh, spraying it with starch, getting it wet and putting it like in a heart shape and then spraying it again and letting that um, dry in that shape. And one of her students took the pizza box to her machine and stitched the lace to the pizza box. So Mary, I guess you kind of did the same thing, right? You added your beautiful fabric and stitched right to the plastic. But here's the beauty of that. You're only going to do that once if you make that mistake. Just like our friend, our, uh, our Martha Pullen student, she only did that once. She never did it again. So no big deal. So um, we're going to place our stabilizer over our metal frame. And I do like to use hoop mat because it's going to keep everything nice and still. And then I'm going to take my terry cloth towel. And, you know, one tip that I often like to give people is to fold the towel at uh, the border because that's going to give you a nice straight line and then you can align that straight fold with the inside frame you can feel that right just line that up and make sure that stabilizer is flat on the bottom and then we're going to open up the towel and then i have taught in the past that we just align our magnetic frame with the attachment and the metal underneath and then we drop it Okay, so right now I can tell you that this is not a line. So I'm going to flip it over so you can see. Here is the edge of my top frame, and here's the edge of my metal. So they are not really aligned, but I'll just stand it on its end and push to get the two layers aligned. And then I'll do the same for the horizontal position and push that down. And now I have a perfectly aligned top and bottom. And if I smooth and tug on my fabric at this point, I know that I have a nice smooth area of fabric and both of my frames are aligned and I can go to the machine and stitch that with no problem. So um, that's, that's how I've been doing it since we invented Snap Hoop Monster. Oh, those many years ago. But um, now, we kind of have a new thing. And we have invented this so that the Janome M17 hoops could work with Janome's app, their AccuSetter. So the key to those apps is that the top and bottom frame must be aligned. If they're not aligned, then that Janome AccuSetter is not going to work. But in the discovery of this and in the invention of this product, we realized like, duh. That's a great product for everybody who has a snap hoop monster. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this is. And we call it Hoop Setter. Hoop Setters feature a channel that fits snugly under snap hoop monster's metal frame. The 90 degree angle mimics the corners of most snap hoop monsters. Hoop setter's barrier walls guide the magnetic top frame into position during the hooping process. On large hoops, place the hoop setters on the corners closest to the attachment with the barrier walls outside of the metal frame. On small hoops, place the hoop setters on the corners opposite the attachment. Place the fabric stabilizer combo or quilt sandwich over the metal frame. You can see the hoop setters are lifting the fabric, making the corners visible. Place the top magnetic frame perpendicular to the attachment. Position it between the hoop setters. Gently release the top frame. The top and bottom are now aligned. So that cleverly designed device, the hoop setter, is really a simple 
a simple tool that you're really going to want to add to your sewing room. So I'll go ahead and I'll do some live demos, very similar to what I just showed you in that video. But here you have your hoop setters. Now notice that the channel is the exact same size as the metal base, right? And it's going to fit right in the corner. And we're going to let our metal frame just sit right in there. Now on a small hoop, it's going to go opposite the attachment. Now, why is that? Because it won't fit, right? This area is too small. It can fit here. And you know, there's really no right or wrong. You could have both uh, hoop setters at one end of the hoop, or you could place it so they are opposite the attachment. That's up to you. There's no right or wrong. The only right or wrong and is that these barriers have to be on the outside of the frame. And frankly, there's no way to put them on the inside of the frame. So that's how we designed it and it works. Okay, so then we're gonna take our stabilizer just like we normally would, right? And we'll place it. I always like to have my stabilizer so it's lined up with that uh, fold of the metal frame. And then I'll take my towel and I'm going, and I can do my same trick with the fold. I can do that same trick and position it so it's aligned. And I know that's gonna, you know, I'm gonna be fairly square. Now, normally I would use a template or a target sticker and maybe even PAL. But in this demonstration, we're just gonna do it like many of you do it at home, I know, without a lot of tools. So I can feel my hoop setters and you can see them. See how the fabric is sitting up? Well, that's because that's where the hoop setter is. So now let's get that top frame and we're going to place that inside those hoop setters, right? I'm just gonna let the hoop setters do the work and I'll drop it in place. Now, you might be a little off, that's okay. The hoop setter is gonna guide it into place and now I am perfectly aligned top and bottom. I don't have to do any kind of, you know, pushing down on the frames in any fashion. Now, I wanna lift off the hoop setters and they will just lift right off. And then I'll just smooth out my fabric and I am ready to go to the machine and stitch. So I just love them. Now, Jean Timmerman, you want to know, do they, do you only need two? Yeah, I haven't tried four and maybe we could try. Oh, that's kind of scary to try it without trying, but they come two in a package. And we've had great success with two. I think four would, you know, now you would be trying to set that whole top frame inside those hoop setters. And remember, they're metal too. So we don't want our magnetic top to stick to the hoop setters and not allow us to get it into the frame. So I think two does it, but you could try four. You sure could. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to some garments because I know many of us like to do garments. Well, I guess while we're on flat fabric here, let's let, let's stay on quilts. Let's move to quilts because we'll get uh, on move the to totally tubular hooping stations into place when it's time to uh, do the garments. Okay, so here we have a simple little quilt uh, sandwich, right? Batting, backing, and I have my eight by eight hoop, and so on the eight by eight hoop. Again, it's not going to fit in this corner. So I'm gonna do it opposite, opposite corners. And you know, I don't have any stabilizer. I don't need any stabilizer because this is just a quilt sandwich and I have my uh, template centered and I could feel those hoop setters, right? And you can probably see them standing up. And then I'll just take that top frame and place it, align it with the hoop setters. And, you know, frankly, it forces me to align it. I don't really have a choice. You know, I, that's just how it goes. Now, we have a little fabric folded here. I'll bet when we pick it up out of the hoop setter, um, that fabric will be free. And if not, you can just pull that out. You know, you're going to use all the regular steps that you normally take to make sure you're square in the hoop and that you have it. Um, you know, how you, how you want to do it. So let's see, Norma Bates, you want to know, do they fit all hoop sizes? Well, they fit most hoop sizes. They do not fit the Bernina oval hoops. So 
we make two Bernina oval hoops, the uh, medium oval and then the long mega hoop, that's the long skinny one. And because they have oval ends or octagon ends, really, they don't work with uh, hoop setters. But the large Bernina hoops that we make do work with hoop setters. So they're the only two that, that don't, uh, you know, that don't fit. Okay, so now, Let's go to a larger hoop because somebody said, oh, she just got her nine and a half by 14 and she's so excited. And that is a big hoop, right folks? That's a big, big hoop. You're barely gonna see the whole thing on the camera, but um, we love those big hoops. And boy, when you're quilting, it is the way to quilt. So let's go ahead and put these hoop setters on and up at the corners again. We could, shall we try it on the end? Why don't we try it on the end? So I'll go ahead and I'll move this one over here. And then we're gonna take our quilt. This pretty quilt, isn't that? One of these days, we're actually gonna quilt this beautiful fabric. <laughs> okay, so now, you know, you would have a template and you would have a plan as to what area of the quilt you're going to start on first. And then you're just going to take that top frame. And now remember, they are at the edge, the, one of the short ends of the hoop. I'm going to call it the top in this position. But again, you can see how that hoop setter is sitting up. Maybe I need to bring this down a little bit so you can see a little bit better in the camera. I'll just come my way. There we go. And then when I drop that in place, now you're going to take time to make sure your fabric is square, however, your whatever your plan was, and then drop it. And it is perfectly aligned, absolutely perfectly aligned. And now when I pull and tug on that fabric, I know I have a uh, top and bottom that is aligned and my hoop setters will pull off the back. And that is... I'm ready to go to the machine. I mean, that's how easy that is. Just super easy. I love how it stays lined up. The top and bottom, I don't have to worry about, you know, stitching on a frame by it, by chance. Okay, shall we move to the totally tubular? Let's see if there's any questions before we move to the totally tubular. Let's see, Reen says, really handy when quilting to get the process going quickly. Absolutely, it really is. And wait till you see how quick it is on garments too. And Reen, you wanna know, is that a cheater quilt? Oh, do I have to fess up? I want you to think I stitched every one of those tiny little blocks, but yes, definitely. It's a cheater quilt. It's so pretty. I wouldn't call it a cheater quilt though. It's made by Hoffman Fabrics and uh, let's see, what's the name of it? It is Hoffman Waves and it's quite beautiful. It was a whole line that they came out with and I have it in two colorways, that pretty pastel and also blue. I've learned through the years that if you see a beautiful cheater quilt and you should buy it because you'll never know how you can use it and incorporate it into other projects. They save time and they're often quite beautiful. Let's see, uh, Krista wants to know, with the, can you use these with Kimberbell's clear blue tile? I'm sure you could, you know, they're just, they're just templates, right? We use templates here all the time. So yeah, I don't see why you could. Mm -mm. Okay, so now let's head over to uh, the overhead cam and I'll bring in um, the Totally Tubular Hooping Station and see if I have my camera, everything aligned, all righty. So I have an eight by eight hoop on here. And uh, someone else said that's their favorite. And for sure, it is mine too, it is mine too. So I have my uh, frame, you know, I, I, we mark centers on our hoops, just, you know, with a Sharpie, and just so that uh, we know where it is. And then we are going to take the um, a hoodie that I purchased recently. So it's just a really pretty, it's a lightweight knit hoodie. And I have uh, our local high school, Flower Mound High School there in, in template. And this is our print and stick target template paper. And folks, you know how great that is, right? It's adhesive, it's sticky. So it's gonna stay on that garment. I can, you know, move that t-shirt around and that template's gonna stay there. I love that. 
I also love that it's translucent. So on this garment, it's just plain fabric. But if this was a print and I was trying to land my embroidery in a specific area, that would be really important. And that's a great feature of print stick target paper. So now I'm on the totally tubular hooping station with POW 3 uh, attached, and I'm just going to dress my board. Now I do have our no-show mesh. Uh, it's fused onto the wrong side of the design area. I'll just show you that so you can see. So there is um, our fusible cutaway, which is such a lovely stabilizer. It's delicate. Okay, so I'm just taking my time to move the garment. You know, you're dressing a board, right? This is knit fabric and a wood base. They don't really want to hold hands all that well. So uh, I'm going to just take my time to make sure this t-shirt is aligned with the laser. That's my goal here, right? I look like I'm a little off, so I'll just twist that shirt. Now everything looks perfectly aligned. Look at me. I forgot to put my hoop setters on, but that's okay. I can do that right now. So, well, we'll just have to, we'll have to do a redo, right, folks? So here we go. We'll lift that top frame, and I mean the bottom frame, and do, repeat that. And now... I want to make sure that I'm still aligned on PAL, and I am, so I'm in good shape. So now we'll take a moment again to dress the board. Now this time, it's probably going to be a little bit more difficult, just a little bit, because now we have those barrier walls there, which is what we want. That hoop setter is holding my garment uh, away from the metal base and allowing me to focus on the template and the PAL. There we go. Everything is aligned. And now we're going to take that top frame and position it in between those hoop setters. And so I'm pushing it right up against the hoop setters. And I think you can really see that barrier wall, you know, is just letting me nest that top frame into position. And then when I drop it, everything is perfectly aligned. I can pull on my fabric, make it a little taut, and then I am ready to stitch this garment. Is that great or what? Yeah, I just love how easy this is. And let's see, Arlene Baker, you want to know, does the hooping station work with any embroidery machine? Absolutely. It works with uh, almost any hoop that's about nine inches small and smaller. Like it works with a six by 10 hoop. It actually works with an eight by 12. I think is the longest rectangle is the largest rectangle that it works with. But I'm going to flip it over in a minute and uh, show you the the small board, and uh, that's for a four by four or five by seven hoop. So, yeah, the totally tubular. I love it. Now the PAL three is sold separately, so you can use it with PAL or without. But the Totally Tubular Hooping Station comes with two hoop mats, and I'll show you them as I pull the other one in. Well, you could see on the overhead that I actually had a white mat, right, underneath the board. And they come with the Totally Tubular uh, Hooping Station, and you, you're going to get a... Uh, the 13 by 13 one, and then also one for the smaller board on the bottom. So I'm going to bring that one in next. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'll just move this out of the camera area, and I'll slide this other one in. You can see I have it all set up. And when I finish uh, quilt, uh, hooping on this, I'll flip it over so you can see how they work. You don't need two. You only need one, but you know, because I'm demoing here and I don't want to waste time, um, I have two. So let me get my other pal on and there we go. We love it. Okay, so now you can see that we have our uh, mat in place and we have our pal is attached to the totally tubular hooping station. I can take a moment to make sure that the pal is aligned with a grid, right? Doesn't matter which one, any one will do. And then I'm going to take my small four by four hoop and place that in this orientation. And I'm aligning the marks on the hoop with the beam. So I, and what happens is when I cover this with fabric, I'm still going to know where the center of the hoop is. And then I'll take a t-shirt and I have my template positioned on that t-shirt. 
in left chest, uh, you know, common placement, right? This is a women's or man's medium. Yeah. So then I'm going to dress the board. So I go hem first and slide that over the board. And here I am again, forgetting my hoop setters. And as you know, because here I am in this room, now I'm not going to be able to find them, right? Oh, I found them. They were on the other hoop, just where they belong, right? Because I didn't undo them. Okay, so now, again, remember, they're not going to work on small hoops next to the attachment. They're going to work opposite the attachment. So place them on, then align with POW because you've moved the hoop and everything is uh, in proper position now. And then we will take our garment and we're just going to dress that board. So I put my hand into the neck so that I can make sure that that template is centered underneath POW. And I'm just taking a moment to pull that down, make sure it's aligned. And then I'm going to hold on to the t-shirt while I flatten it out and let the hoop setter do its job, right? It's holding the, uh, the metal frame in position and allowing the fabric to sit on top. So now I'm gonna take that top frame and position it right in between those hoop setters and drop it. And I am perfectly aligned just as I planned. And as I lift this, the hoop setters come off and they kind of fall into the t-shirt. Here they are. So, but now I am perfectly aligned. Top and bottom, all four edges are one unit perfectly aligned. So I love this new product. I think it's really, really cool. Really, really cool. Okay, let's see what kind of questions there are. Now, Mary S. Larson, you can't wait to get yours. Let's see. So, Retha, would you use the hoop setters each time you move your quilt? I would not use hoop setters at the machine. Definitely not. You're not going to need them there. I mean, they would help, right? But you're, when we quilt and we are advancing a quilt, and I'll play that video again so you can see that process, we're not taking that metal frame off the machine, right? Because on a quilt, you might have 50, 60 hoopings, depending on, on how big your, your quilt is. And you don't want to have to take that quilt on and off every time. We're leaving that metal frame on the machine and just advancing the fabrics. Ah, and Angela Dickinson says, yes, look, this may help me not pinch my fingers. Well, I have some blood blisters, maybe like you do too. It does happen, but you're right. No more pinching fingers with hoop setters because the hoop setter is guiding the frame. You don't have to hold on to it to the last moment and maybe a little bit too small. So let's see, Rosemary, you want to know how small of a shirt could you use the hoop station with? Well, you could do it with a onesie. I have one right here. Let me show you. Um, I have one right here. It doesn't have any stabilizer on it. So, mm, you know, it's not going to be that great. But I could show you how we would do a onesie for sure. You know, you'd have, uh, you could just dress that board just like that. You'd have your your frame, your metal frame in place. You would have that down first, but yep, absolutely wonderful. So super easy. And this is a size 12 months. So it could probably go six to nine months, but if you are making uh, gifts for babies, you know, th they grow really, really quick and it's very difficult to embroider a tiny onesie, you know, like zero to three months or three to six months. So opt for a little larger size and make it easier on yourself. And then the family will have something to look forward to. Okay. So let me show you um, how I'm just going to kind of flip this around. I know we have that side cam so that you can see underneath. So it's two boards, right? You get a eight by 13 inch board and a 13 by 13. It also comes with a pedestal. Uh, it, so this is like a cantilevered board, right? So we have a pedestal and two plates. And when they are attached, then you can flip these over, flip the whole unit over. Of course, PAL is attached. So it, it just screws on and I can unscrew that. I'll flip this around so you can see that. So I can just unscrew this and take it off. And then when I flip the board over, I can attach PAL to the other board. So that's your choice whenever you want. 
So let's see, Sheila Green, you want to know, uh, would it work with genomic machines? Sure, it would work with any hoop. It even works with standard hoops, our totally tubular hooping station, for sure. Now, the hoop setters, today's special, are the um, only work with Snap Hoop Monsters. They are designed specifically for our bottle, bottom metal frame, and uh, they work perfectly with that. So let's see. Let why don't we take a, a why don't we watch that really short video again of at the machine and why you wouldn't use hoop setter there, but just how great it is to quilt with a snap hoop monster. Ready for the next hooping? You don't have to remove the whole quilt. Just lift that top frame and stash it out of the way. I attach it to the metal leg of my table and then advance the fabric to the next design area. Place that top frame back in position, slide it under the embroidery foot, and then take a moment to align the top frame with the metal bottom frame. And then you are ready to stitch your next quilting design. Yeah, so that's why we wouldn't use it at the machine, you know, so it, it really is in like Judy says that it's going to be a game changer to help her hoop her fabric. Absolutely, especially with the largest hoop. I think you're right about that. You know, the smaller hoops, so four by four, um, if that's all you're working with, you probably don't need a, a hoop setter. But anything above that, even a five by seven, you get up to the eight by eight, six by 10, seven by 12, on and on and on, you know, they get bigger, 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 and they're unwieldy, right? They can be really unwieldy, like that uh, nine by 14 that I was using. That's a, a large frame with a lot of open space. Its sewing field is huge and that's why we buy it, right? We love it, but it could be a little challenging to work with. So the hoop setters really help you control that and keep that under, um, you know, under control. Yeah, so let's see. How's plug into a 110 outlet or where do you plug it into? Yeah. It, um, maybe somebody on my team, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it plugs into a 110 outlet, but it, it also has a USB, um, uh, you know, uh, bleh, let me just show you. <laughs> How about we do that? <laughs> okay. So it, uh, here, let's go to the overhead cam so we can see. So it also has another, uh, you know, a device that plugs into the outlet, but you can stick this into an embroidery machine, into a laptop, whatever would provide power for that. So, yeah. And yeah, you have 220 in Germany. So, um, but you probably have an adapter, right? Do you sometimes use an adapter? That might work for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, Let's see. Well, did you, so you're, you're going to be amazed. You know, somebody earlier in the comments said um, that she, she was in Puerto Rico and she's waiting for us to go live. And she said she's afraid of how much money she's going to spend. Well, the good thing is it's not going to be that much money. It's really not going to be that much money. So I want to show you, um, I'm not sure where that is. <laughs> I'm not sure where that is. Uh, Oh, here we are. Okay. So it's only $29.99 and you get two in a package. But did you know that not only can you order it from us, but there are many retailers in the United States that carry it. And I'm going to show you this list. Now it's in alphabetical order by dealer store name, not by state. And in the future, we'll probably run it by state, but I just wanted you to see how many retailers already have it in their store? So you can go there and um, purchase one today. So as you can see, we have coverage from California 
to North Carolina and Minnesota to Florida. So uh, we would encourage you to call your dealer and see if they have it in store. And if they don't, you can tell them to order it. Or, of course, you can uh, order it from us. So let's see. Lucia wants to know what about the UK? Um, we don't currently have distribution in the UK, so I apologize for that, but we're happy to ship to you. So I, I hope that you will embrace Hoopsetter. I know that it's an exciting new product and it's so reasonably priced, $29.99. I love it and I think you will too. It's gonna help you hoop easier, faster, better, isn't that what we're always striving for? And speaking of striving, you know, we have Ashley Jones coming up pretty soon. She's going to be back on a Tuesday for Software Success on September 5th at one o'clock. And she's going to do part one of Perfect Embroidery Pro. Now, that's our full digitizing program, and I know many of you have it. So she's going to do two sessions on that, and um, she will... Uh, be teaching and sharing all her tips and tricks that she knows in PEP, then boy, does she have plenty up her sleeve. So I know that you always want to be uh, notified of when we're going live. So the way that you can do that is by um, subscribing to our YouTube channel and liking us on Facebook. And we hope that you will um, do that because the more, you know, the more you like us, the better our numbers. And if you subscribe, that helps us, you know, stay energized and know that uh, people are watching and um, that you can, uh, that we'll continue to do this, right? Because that's pretty important. And then I am going to be back next week with a two guests, two guests next week. One is Sue Brown and one is Gloria Cardoza. She is new to you, and you are going to enjoy meeting Gloria. Gloria is going to teach all of us, oh my, I need help in this area, the secrets to organizing embroidery designs. Now, secret, she's young, you know, so she's been using computers probably longer than me for sure. And uh, I know that I'm always learning something from Gloria. And so she's going to share those tips with all of us next week. So I hope that you'll come back and do that. But I know you've been waiting for uh, our on the house design and that's coming up next, but let's see what you've been working on. creations you all make with our free on the house designs. To do that we have to be able to find your designs first. Go to Facebook and create a new post for your latest project. Make sure that your post is set to public view and add a quick description and photo of what you've made. Now the important part, adding your hashtags. You're going to want to use hashtag on the house, hashtag dime so along, and hashtag exquisite thread. And that's it. Now you can click post. So we've had some great comments before I share the design. Like uh, Joanne Banco said, if you didn't see your dealer on that list, it of course doesn't hurt to ask them, you know, if they have uh, to order the products for you or tell them to just get it in or contact us. We'll be happy to tell them how to do that. And one of our friends is up in South Dakota, and she said it's way far away from where she lives in South Dakota. I understand that, Alexandria. So we're happy to ship it to you. We do that every day. So, uh, and DD, same for you. But we're here to support all of your embroidery needs also. But we also, we just like to share. And, you know, we really wouldn't be here without the support of the sewing machine retailers that you all shop at every day. So we want to continue to support them also. And let's see, Julianne Crook said, you want to know, do you have to use all three hashtags? You do not have to use all three hashtags. Um, 
we're just trying to cover the world, you know? So <laughs> let's see. Patricia Anderson, oh my gosh, you missed the first 36 minutes. No worries. Yes, you can definitely watch the broadcast, the whole thing in its entirety once we, uh, you know, go off the air. So please do that. And uh, okay, so now is the big reveal. And, you know, let's not forget Deborah Jones. She's the one who does this whole program on the house. She picks out the artwork. She oversees the digitizing and she does a fabulous job. And I think maybe she had me in mind when she picked this one because I swooned when I saw this beautiful embroidery design. This whale tail, look how fun that is. It kind of looks like a henna design, the print on the whale's tail and that water. Oh my, isn't that just beautiful? It's lovely. And she incorporated some of our variegated thread. So you'll have fun playing with uh, six different spools of thread. I hope that you're participating in the On the House program. You know, you can still download the entire year. Every Thursday, there's a new design. And then at the end of the year, they're all gonna go away. So stay with us and download them every week and then you'll have them. So I appreciate uh, all of you that do participate in the On the House uh, program. It's, it's been a lot of fun. And next week, not only are we gonna have two guests and learn about organizing designs, but we're also going to have the On the House project reveal. And it's, it's a hot one. Let's just call it that. Okay, folks, thanks for joining me today. And I look forward to seeing you here next week. Same bat channel, same bat time. Have a good week.